and welcome to this edition of Tips and Tricks. I got a good one for you today. It's about the key to using bottom hopping baits. You'll want to hear this. Alrighty, the last little, well, it was a video blog. It wasn't a Tips and Tricks, but I was talking about the basics. And since I was on the subject of the basics, I figured I'd give you a little more in-depth video about the basics. Usually, you know, bottom hopping baits, worms, creature style, jigs, Ned rigs, all the stuff that usually work right on the bottom. I mean, there's some other baits like deep diving cranks and that you can pound off the bottom or, or you can take like underspins or spinner baits and work them or chatter baits. But, but I'm, I'm talking about the plastic side of the stuff that you just like slowly bottom hop. And well, there, like I said, in the other one I mentioned, there's a lot to it, but you know, to start with it. Well, this one's about well, are they feeding right on the bottom or just off the bottom? If you watch my lives, I mention this all the time and I say, you know, I'll go through different baits and I'm saying, all right, well, let's see if they're on the bottom or if they're feeding just off the bottom. And, you know, most people, when they fish something like, you know, a jig or plastic worm and that, they have a pretty heavy weight on it and they just basically drag it and kind of hop a little bit, but they keep it right on the bottom. Sometimes the fish, they get really picky and yeah, they want to feed right on the bottom. A lot of times they want to feed just off the bottom, like six to eight inches off the bottom. And everybody be, oh, well, you know, well, if they want to do that, why don't you just go to a drop shot? Well, yeah, a drop shot is a good way to fish something slow and nice and attractively in that on the bottom and keep it, you know, off the bottom. Six to eight, 10 inches, that's where I usually keep my drop shots. But there's also a way that you can keep a lot of the baits, like a jig, or a Texas rig worm or something like that. You can work it and you can have it be coming up off the bottom and then slightly float back down. And a lot of that has to do with the weight you use. Now let's just take the Ned. Now if you're fishing this little Ned and you have one like this, which is like a, looks like a quarter ounce maybe, 3 16s, quarter ounce, with this little teeny thing. Uh, when you sit there and you're working it, usually you're working on a lighter line than that, you know, you're working this thing along and it's staying pretty much right on the bottom you know it's just like bouncing like that and it's staying right on the bottom you might come up up on a rock and like down over a rock we use this thing and use like a one a one fifteenth or a one thirty second or whatever when you're working this thing and if you're down like 10 15 feet or something when you're working it actually it's probably going to come up and be off the bottom about six to eight inches in that and then when you stop and put your rod down and reel in the line it's going to go to the bottom and then it's gonna come back up like that when you're working it and then float back down to the bottom and that, that's what I said are they one day they might want this with a heavier just right on the bottom and the next day you're like fishing the same thing and you can't get anything and your friends like oh dude I got them on a good Ned, right, uh, Ned rig bite and it's like dude I got them yesterday and I was trying it today and they're like they just don't seem to want it today the difference was the one guy was using a light one and while he was sitting there working it with the resistance of the line and being down a certain way it was picking it up and having it come up off the bottom and then slowly go back down and they were eating it when it was up off the bottom they didn't really want it when it was right on the bottom i know it's weird but bass are weird they get when they're feeding in a certain way they want the presentation the same exact way and like i said it can be exactly on the bottom or just a little off the bottom and you can do that with anything like if you're using a texas rig i mean you you could fish a texas rig worm and you could put like a big heavy weight on it and you're going, you're bouncing over rocks, you're keeping it right on the rocks and everything. Or you can switch to something like 1 8, little 1 8. I used to always use a 1 16. Not good in the wind, but on calm days when it's slick, when you're usually going to plastics because they're finicky. Yeah, I would use a, a, a 1 16, not even a 1 8. So a lot of people think a 1 8, that's like really light. I like the 1 16, but what that does is when you're working it, it allows it to come up, you know, instead of having the heavier weight and, and working it right on the bottom. It allows you to get it up and it comes up off and then falls back down. Or if you come up on a log or a rock, instead of coming up on it with a heavier weight and you work it over, it'll drop straight down. When you do that and you bring it off, it'll kind of glide a little bit and be up off the bottom for a bit and then come down. And that's, that's the, I'm telling you, that is the key so many times when you're using plastics like this. And you can see it even, I mean, even a weightless wacky, you're putting it down there and a lot of people will let it, you know, you let it sit at the bottom and then you, 
you kind of pull it a bit and it brings it up off the bottom about six, eight inches and then it flutters back down. Or you set it on the bottom and you're just really tediously moving it so it's just sort of wiggling. Well, that's why I go to the flicken with a little bit of weight. But even in that, I will use, I have a 16th, a 1 8th, or a 3 16th. And it's just, it's just figuring them out, whether they're feeding right on the bottom or they want it right on the bottom or they want it just off the bottom. Because if I'm using the 1 16th, especially on a bigger, more floaty, like our gotcha stick here, while I'm doing that working it, the resistance of it, it's, it's going to pull it up off the bottom while I'm working it. And then, it's, then when I, every time I stop, it's going to fall back down on the bottom and work up. Compared to if I had a heavier one on the whole time I'm working it, it's just wiggling and it's pretty much staying right on the bottom. And this is like, I don't know, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's amazing, but it is, is so key. And that's, I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, a lot of times I'll try the flicking or I will try a jig and then I'll go, all right, well, let's see if they want something off the bottom and I'll switch to a drop shot. Well, if I do switch to the drop shot and I start getting fish, then I might be, aha, aha, this could be a clue. They, they're definitely, I just fished through that with stuff hugging the bottom. Now suddenly I want it just a little off the bottom. So I go back with a lighter jig or I can go back with a lighter flicking or a lighter Texas rig or a lighter Ned rig and fish something that's getting it up about, you know, six to eight inches off the bottom and floating down. So that's sort of, I mean, I don't know, a lot of people hear me say it and they've been wanting me to do a video like this, sort of explaining what I mean when I say, are they on the bottom or just off the bottom? And it just, a lot of it has to do with just what they're feeding on. Even if it's crawdads, sometimes if it's cold water and the crawdads or the way they're feeding on them, you know, this, anyway, this one's missing a claw, I'll use an example. They might be, you know, just milling around on the bottom or they're just sitting there eating and the fat bass are kind of sneaking up on them and picking them up off the bottom. Or it might be a situation where the bass are just cruising. Crawdads are more active, maybe on rocks than that. And they're just cruising around. All of a sudden, they get close to one and it spooks. And all of a sudden, boop, 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 it takes off. But it doesn't take off like straight across the bottom. It takes off, but it comes up like six, eight inches on the bottom. And it starts like, you know, kicking its tail and going across. And so they're just cruising around. All of a sudden, they spook one and it takes off. And that's when they chase them down and grab them. So I said, even, even with crawds, it could be that they're sneaking up on them, getting them because they're just feeding on the bottom and they're just like slowly moving around or watching or sneaking up on them or they're just kind of cruising and there's rocks and, and sticks and logs and stuff around and they're just kind of cruising and all of a sudden one will take off up just like a foot or so off the bottom and start and they'll run it down and eat it that way or it could be it could be uh you know bluegill or something like that either there's something that's on the bottom so you know like uh where's the ned where's the ned where's the ned where's my prop there's my prop Maybe the bluegill, something like this, or maybe a Nico rig with a heavier you know, weight. So, and it looks like, you know, the, the bluegill are feeding on the bottom. So they're just sitting there, something they like, some sort of something's on the bottom that they're feeding on. And so the bass are, are coming up, seeing them, eating them, but they're hitting them right on the bottom. They're like, cause they're feeding on the bottom. Or they could be up around rocks or, or branches and stuff. And they're sort of suspended about a foot or so off the bottom. And they're feeding on stuff that's floating in the column that's about a foot up. So, and I know a lot of people think like, really, but if they're looking at a foot up and they're still gonna see it if you're working it, you know, right underneath them and they're gonna go down and get it. No, I'm telling you, they get that picky. If they're on a certain bite and they're looking to feed a certain way, they will get that picky. And that could be the difference between going out in a day and <laughs> blanking and somebody else going on the, the same day using very similar jigs or worms or neds or creatures and they're fishing them lighter they're getting them up off the bottom or you're fishing them lighter and getting them up off the bottom and they're just dragging them and keeping them really close you know really close to the bottom and, and crawling them right on the bottom so yeah like i said a lot of people have been asking they hear me say that they put in the in the comments when i'm fishing like did you do a show on that because you just keep saying well they're not on the bottom let's see if they're just off the bottom and so here's me explaining to you what I mean by feeding right on the bottom or feeding just off the bottom. And with bottom hopping bait, it is a key that could lead to a lot more fish to the boat on days that you think they're not hitting something. But yeah, oh, and especially too, another thing, I used to do this a lot in California lakes because our lakes are usually steep. They're made with dams, they're not natural. 45 degree angle, it's kind of the same thing when you're doing that. Like I used to fish a lot of 45 degree angle with rock and stuff on it. 
And as you're coming at it with a heavier jig, it's keeping itself as it goes down that slope, you know, on the bottom. Where if you go to a lighter one, it's on the bottom, and then when you work it with the lime resistance and that, it'll actually pull it like, oh, well, here I, oh, this way, all right. It'll be on, and then it'll pull it off, and then it'll slide back down and land, and then it'll come off a little bit. And a lot of times they just, if they're not feeding on the bottom, or for whatever reason, why they're oriented that way or not, right on the bottom, right on the bottom, right on the bottom, down that with a heavy jig and having it fall through the rocks or down the, the sandy bank and that, they won't hit it. But if it suddenly, you go to a lighter jig or you pop it maybe, if you're using heavier to get it to come off the bottom and come back down, and up off the bottom and come back down. But either way, it's still either they're oriented to feed right on the bottom or they're feed it, oriented to feed just off the bottom. I know, it sounds like they would hit it either way, but no, no, they get that picky, trust me. I'm 40 years and I've experimented a lot in this. And you see it in my lives when I'm saying, oh, well, I tried this, let me try the lighter. I'll try the 16 ounce jig, and then I'll try the 8 ounce. Or I'll try a heavier Ned, and then I'll try a lighter Ned. But yeah, guys, that's, that's, that's the point of this. I'm telling you, it will really, really help you out on getting, being more consistent and getting more fish to the boat. So yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much gonna, that's, that's gonna wrap up this tips and tricks. Uh, yeah on the bottom or just off the bottom it makes a difference hope this helps and i'll see you next time Whew.